Hello everybody, this is Fun Police and I am bringing you a fire and maneuver guide. For today we're going to take a look at the Second French Empire, quickly talking about all of its units and then going over builds for both the early and late period. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as I eventually plan to do a guide on every single nation within fire and maneuver. With that out of the way, the Second French Empire is described as an easy, defensive, and well-rounded faction. It is said to be a well-balanced and versatile force with a bevy of units to choose from, including the highly durable Foreign Legion. But beware your foe's superior numbers and quality of artillery. I generally do agree with elements of what the Second French Empire does, although I would say that it's not defensive per se, but more so of a balanced force. Definitely the strength of the Second French Empire is its infantry roster. The French infantry is a very well-rounded force, having access to a variety of tools that generally just makes it very cost-effective. There's not a whole lot that is wrong with it, and it can fill in most niches that it needs to. It also has a very competent cavalry tab made up of a variety of decent light cavalry and a bevy of generally more powerful heavy cavalry. The only weakness in terms of the French Empire's forces is its artillery tab. Taking on a more vanilla role, the artillery of the Second French Empire is just overall not impressive and just lacks the punch of other artillery the other artillery pieces from other factions that just leaves it overall pretty underwhelming however the french empire although its artillery does indeed lack a bit definitely makes up for it by just its infantry being so solid the simple fact is is that in fire and maneuver the majority of your army is going to be made up of infantry and the second french empire just has really solid infantry and as such the faction is well-rounded and capable of just always being able to do something in a match it'll never feel like it has to crutch on some specific gimmick in order to win it can just play very straightforward and still come out on top if a player does well now let's jump over into the early period and we can talk about the units a bit more in depth and then we'll talk about some builds in the early period france is still a very capable faction but i would definitely say they are less of the shining star that they will become in the late period uh, and this largely relates to their infantry tab most notably due to the weaponry they have access to uh, we'll talk about that more in a minute once we get to the late period but let's just talk about the units available in early period so the first one is line infantry this is just a standard vanilla unit six health four cohesion it's about as bog standard as you get in terms of an infantry unit you also have the zouaves which are a six health four cohesion infantry that also has melee drill making them overall much stronger in melee although more expensive you also have these chesses a pied uh, I'm definitely going to butcher some of these French-sounding names, so I apologize for that. But these guys are 6 health, 3 cohesion, light infantry, and they have the skirmishing trait. Sadly, at the moment, these guys are generally not too good, uh, because the 3 cohesion makes them a lot, le a lot easier to kill. And skirmishing is just... Although not a bad perk, is not enough to make this unit stand out compared to just like taking a line infantry who has that extra cohesion and just pretty much does the same thing. If they both take three damage, then neither of them loses that point of health. And overall, the line infantry are just better at tanking and being a combat unit. Then you have the Voltigeers of the Guard. These are another light infantry, this time with 4 health and 4 cohesion. They have range drill and skirmishing. And these guys are actually quite good uh, for the simple fact that they have range drill, which is a very, very powerful trait. These units, even though they're not the most high health units, they do have that nice 4 cohesion. So they're also going to be able to take a fair bit of punishment 
And as long as they're not getting hit for five or more damage, then they're generally able to stick around in combat and can definitely lay out some real damage uh, thanks to that range drill. Then we have a French Foreign Legion. This is the first heavy infantry, and this is a unique heavy infantry. It has the standard 6 health, 5 cohesion, but it has a combo of melee drill and rugged. There is not a lot of rugged infant heavy infantry within the game. In fact, only Italy at the moment has another the other rugged heavy infantry. And these guys have melee drill, making them also the best melee rugged infantry within the game. And this makes them very specialized. In terms of contesting a forest or some other rugged terrain, you pretty much can can't get any better than the French Foreign Legion. And because of that, they do serve a good purpose, and on certain maps they can be incredibly strong. A good example is something like Tartar Junction, who has some usually pretty important uh, forest lines in the center of the map, and the French Foreign Legion can contest those very, very well. Plus, it can just be mentioned that these are essentially just big zouaves. So if you need to just have more heavy infantry act in your line, then the French Foreign Legion is quite powerful. But all those units really pale in comparison to the the what I would say is the best thing about France, and that is the Grenadiers of the Guards. This is the next heavy infantry, again, 6 health, 5 cohesion, but they have range drill and efficiency. and. To put it bluntly, this is the strongest combination of perks in the game. Especially on a heavy infantry. And the Grenadier of the Guards makes up the foundation of pretty much every French composition there is. And they are definitely the best part about France. The, their stat line makes them very hard to actually kill. And the fact that they're able to very quickly move around the battlefield and lay down tons of damage thanks to range drill simply makes Grenadiers of the Guards just an absolute monster on the battlefield. If used correctly, they can absolutely win in a situation where they are outnumbered. And, they are, and unlike something like Britain, who has something that is quite similar... They're not bogged down by random additional perks. So they remain, although expensive, they're more affordable than other nations that have something similar to this, which gives them a huge advantage. Then we talk about the, talking about the cavalry, we have the Hussars. Uh, 6 health, 3 cohesion, light cavalry, no traits, just your standard light cavalry. Uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with it, although they also are not the strongest cavalry out there. But they can still be very devastating if they can get into a melee uh, on a like artillery piece or if they can get a back charge. Then you have lancers, which are very are essentially are hussars with the same three cohesion, six health, but they also have shock, meaning that their charge damage is much higher. This means that. There, although you pay a bit of a premium, I generally see Lancers as kind of the standard light cavalry. And the reason for this is simply that adding two damage onto a charge makes it just so much more effective. In that if you can get like a side charge, that is upwards of like four to five damage. Which can even break the cohesion of a heavy infantry and then you start dealing melee and have the unit pinned. And generally, if your cavalry is charging into enemies, you're using them to, like, pin or deal, like, a high amount of damage at once. And Lancers just generally do that a bit better than the Hussars, even if they are a bit more expensive. Then you have the Chessers, a Chevelle. These are 4 health, 3 cohesion cavalry that has the skirmishing trait. Sadly, these units, I think, are also quite underwhelming. Although skirmishing is nice on cavalry, so they don't lose health if they get shot at... Simply put, you're paying 10 less points, but you have 2 less health than a Hussar. And health is really important on cavalry because they're often going to be stuck brawling in melee. Uh, so the Chessiers are just not really that effective, and I rarely see these taken, if at all. Then we also have Dragoons. This is a very vanilla heavy cavalry, so 4 health and 6 cohesion with no traits. They're really, really cheap. 130 points for this stat line makes them about the same cost as a standard line infantry. 
And even if you bring them with a gun, that's only 160 points, which if you compare to like, say, a rifled Zwabs, it's about the same cost. This makes it a unit that, although is not super amazing in terms of its like damage and overall uh, like impact on the battlefield, it's much easier to maybe fit in a couple alongside your composition without having to like spend, you know, a third of your money doing so. They're just very cost effective if you're looking for some amount of mobile troops. And then you have the Carassiers. These are a much stronger heavy cavalry, having five cohesion and six health alongside melee drill. These guys are definitely tuned a lot more for getting involved in melee, not only because of that higher cohesion, but again, because of that melee drill. They're overall just very, very effective if they can get on top of the enemy and charge into them. But they do cost, they're more in line with cost like the Lancers, so there is definitely a cost that comes to them. But... In general, this unit can be quite good. That high cohesion makes it very hard to break the unit with fire at will. So they're able to potentially dance around, and if you equip them with carbines, then they can do a decent amount of damage and then charge in and really abuse that melee drill if they need to. Then in terms of artillery, we kind of have, as was talked about previously, an underwhelming thing all around. You have a four-pound field artillery, two cohesion, six health, three range, cumbersome and anti-personnel, honestly pretty bad. Uh, even though they're very cheap, it's just not worth it because enemy infantry will just be able to move in range and attack, and then this artillery piece will just not be able to do anything. Uh, you then have the 12-pound field artillery, uh, six health, two cohesion, four range. The extra range is nice. It does have cumbersome and anti-personnel again, and in general, when you look at artillery, there's three things you're looking for in artillery pieces to decide if they're good or not, and that is either breech loading, that range drill, or they don't have cumbersome on them. If they don't have one of those three things, then generally they're not a very good artillery piece, and that's what makes the 12 pound just overall lackluster. Unless you're facing off against a faction that doesn't have anything uh, like if any faction that has better artillery than this will just be able to bully out the French artillery options. And that's why you don't see France with a lot of artillery. You also have a four-pound horse artillery. It's the same thing as the four-pound field, but it has two movements, so it's a little more expensive, but it does get that two movement. This is one of the few artillery pieces that might have a purpose within a build, uh, because being able to move two spaces just makes it a lot more flexible and means that it can get out of danger if it gets caught and the enemy can get on top of it. It's more likely to be able to safely fall back, uh, which does make it a little bit more useful. But three range and it doesn't have great perks on it. It's still very vanilla and kind of underwhelming. And then the 22 centimeter Houtzer. This one has four range, two cohesion, six health, and then it has indirect fire and cumbersome. This is probably the one artillery piece I think makes sense within France, and it's simply because indirect fire is useful on certain maps, uh, especially like with forests or with something like a uh, in hill in the middle of it. The 22 centimeter howitzer being able to fire your own over your own troops and also terrain means that on specific maps, the 22 centimeter howitzer can have a purpose. And it's probably the one artillery piece that France would run uh, if it was like playing in a serious match. But otherwise, the artillery tab is underwhelming. So, how do we build France in the early period? Well, it's actually quite straightforward. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to add two Grenadier of the Guards. This is pretty much mandatory for any French build in any game. Uh, these are the foundation of France. They are the best unit of France, and they make up the biggest strength of France by just being so strong. So you always want to maximize your amounts of Grenadier of the Guards. You need to have a very very, very specific reason as to why you don't want Grenadier of the Guards. And even if you have that reason, it's probably a bad reason. If you're playing France, play double Grenadier of the Guards. They are your foundation. 
However, after that is where France kind of opens up to different builds. Because the rest of your options are kind of open. And you can kind of build it as you prefer. France is pretty flexible uh, with what else you want to take. A very standard build would be taking these Voltigeers of the Guards. Because they also have range drill. Just giving you a ton of range drill. And then doing something like taking maybe a cavalry and a couple line infantry. This is a very standard build. Uh, maximizes your power at range. You have a decent amount of numbers. And then you even have like, you know, a heavier cavalry. Or you could take like maybe the Houtzer if it's on a specific map. Or you could go with something like a Lancer uh, if you wanted the light cavalry. There's a lot of flexibility in these builds. This is, I would say, maybe the most standard early period build. Uh, you really can't go wrong with something like this. It's just very flexible and very well-rounded. However, you could do other things. You could load up on the French Foreign Legion and even just go like pure quality looking to do something like this. Uh, although you do leave a fair amount of money, so you could potentially load in with units like this. Uh, there's, a, again, a lot of options, uh, but a quality build could be something. You get a lot of heavy infantry, all the range drill in there. Could be a decent option. But you probably do want to cut one thing and run like a couple line infantry or like a couple cavalry because it's just overall going to be, you're going to lose out on, you don't really want to ever be sitting on like $80. So something like this could be an efficient build, uh, just relying on the fact that you have a lot of really strong heavy infantry, a Volta gears, and then you also have like options for your cavalry. Another option is more straightforward, and it's essentially just kind of spam line infantry. You have double grenadiers as your foundation, and then you just have a bunch of line infantry with rifles. There's nothing wrong with this build. It's very well-rounded and capable, and you could even cut one or two of them in order to fit in, like, a cavalry unit if you wanted to, but simply put, spamming a bunch of line infantry can be pretty effective. But regardless of how you build it, uh, really, the foundation is just double grenadier of the guards. That's the, the core of every build you'd want to do. And then after that, you can kind of just build based on the map. So if you know the map is going to have a lot of terrain, then you can build to take something like more uh, cavalry or something like the French Foreign Legion. You know, or if you're in like Saarbrücken, which is a map that's pretty infamous as like heavy in towns, then you may actually want to opt for maybe a couple artillery pieces alongside your line troops. But that is, you know, pretty much the build. So let's jump over to the late period now uh, and we'll talk about the new units that are added, what changes and how it affects France in the late period. Within the late period, France, I definitely think, takes a new and much more powerful form. Uh, because even though it's it has a ho whole host of new units, really what makes it stand out is its rifled breech loaders. This Fusil M1866, or I believe it's called the Chassepot rifle. Uh, I may be incorrect on that, but regardless, uh, this unit or this weapon, is available for all infantry. And as you can see, almost every infantry comes pre-equipped with it. This is something that is unique mostly to France and one other nation in Austria. But those are the only factions that get rifled breech loaders on all of their units. Every other faction has to often deal with a limit or a restriction on who is able to make use of these weapons. France does not have that, that limitation, so it is possible to build an entire force that is practically entirely armed with rifled breech loaders, which gives them a ranged, ranged firepower that is so destructive that it's often hard to overcome. Uh, and this is especially true with the Grenadier of the Guards. Having rifled breech loaders on a range drill efficiency heavy infantry is nuts. And it makes grenadiers pretty much the best infantry in the game, bar none. But let's talk about the new units real quick. Starting off, you have the mobile guard. 
Uh, this is a 6 health, 3 cohesion militia unit, and it has breakable, where if it has 0 cohesion, it loses 1 health at the end of turn. They're overall the cheapest unit out there. Militias are generally a bit on the weak side. However, their very low cost makes them great in bolstering a force. Uh, I think their best purpose is generally to be guarding something like artillery or helping to protect flanks. Uh, you can give them rifles and have them on like fire at will to help keep cavalry in check. It's also possible to uh, pair them up with something like a melee unit, like say the Zwavs, and then have them be sort of a melee force. Because if the mobile guard is in reserves, it won't take damage uh, for charging in and adds additional damage alongside the Zwavs. It's overall a decent unit that you can often sneak at least one into builds with leftover money, especially because most units are getting more expensive. Then you have these Franks Tiers. Uh, these are a new light infantry with four health, two cohesion, and then they have range drill, skirmishing, and breakable. These guys are essentially glass cannons. They're overall one of the cheapest range drilled units out there but they also essentially if they get shot at one or two times pretty much just are instantly wiped off the map this makes them hard to use because if you want you need to get them in range to shoot at stuff but if the enemy puts even a little bit of focus fire on them they will just die and then you've potentially spent 155 points for very little in return there may be some builds or against certain factions that could make use of this, but with France's excellent range drill options elsewhere, the Franks just generally I don't see a whole lot in builds because it's better to just take the more durable range drilled options. Moving up to cavalry, we get a new unit in these Carabineers. Uh, these are essentially an ev evolution of the Carassiers, which have the heavy cavalry, so they're two movement, they have five cohesion and six health, and then they have melee drill and shock. This makes them arguably one of the hardest hitting melee units within the French Empire, which does give them a strong use. Now, they do come equipped with uh, breech loading carbines, but you could also just make them melee only, uh, and they're about 210 points in that regard, making them potentially very, very strong if they can get into a melee. Their high cohesion makes them very durable if they get in, and shock and melee drill means that they'll be dealing more damage than they're taking. It's overall a unit that can fit well into builds if you need to be more aggressive with France, uh, but you're not looking to, like, use, say, like, a Lancer in order to overrun an artillery piece. If you're just using these to, like, flank enemies and threaten, like, really hard-hitting charges, these guys can be very, very good. And then we get one new artillery piece, which is this Mitra gun. Uh, it's a rapid-fire artillery piece. It's essentially what would become... It's in the similar vein to something like the Gatling gun and what would eventually become machine guns. These are, this has two health and four co hit points, or two cohesion and four hit points, my bad. And then it has anti-personnel and range drill. So range drill is instantly something to be looking out for in artillery pieces. And this also notably does not have cumbersome. This means this unit is able to move and shoot on the same turn, which makes it very, very strong. Especially if you get this next to an enemy unit, you'll be dealing... I think upwards of 5 damage, which is enough to break the cohesion of any unit in the game and leaves them extremely open to being killed by your numerous rifled breech loader infantry. So, how do you build late period France? Well, first things first, double grenadier of the guards. Especially because they have rifled breech loaders now, Grenadier of the Guards are just so insanely powerful that in late period, I don't think there is ever a reason to not take them. However, like in the early period, you then also get a variety of options in how you want to do it. And in general, France just wants to kind of build the remainder of its army around countering the enemy or dealing with the map. 
So again, if we have something like a map, like say Tartar Junction, that has some important force in the middle, maybe we want to take a foreign legion in order to have a strong rugged unit. Then maybe I'm feeling like I'm playing against something like say Prussia who is taking powerful artillery pieces. So I will want to take something like a Lancer in order to have something to threaten their powerful Krupp Mortars. Uh, because otherwise, those Krupp Mortars could really wipe me off the map. And then after that, I kind of have to decide on what else I want. But I feel as though I could probably just abuse the, the limited firepower of... Uh, Prussia, who doesn't really have a whole lot of longer range weaponry, so I'm going to just take more units with some rifled breech loaders and call it a day. But again, you can kind of build as you want. If you're looking for a very straightforward build, then this is, I would say, probably the most meta build within France in the late period. You have double Grenadier of the Guards, double Voltigeers, a Mitra, and then a mobile guard to spend the, as much money as you can. Honestly, not a whole lot to say about it. You're just abusing the fact that you you have like everything with range drill, and they all have rifled breech loaders, and you're going to win through that. Uh, but you could definitely build this in different ways, do a variety of things based on what you feel like you need. It's all a little bit down to preference. Uh, really, again, like I said in the early period, it's mainly just double Grenadier of the Guards, and then fill in as you desire. With that said, that is the primary elements of how you kind of play and build France. So, let's talk about one thing that I think it's crucial to understand with France, and that is how to use and deal with the Grenadier of the Guards. Because this is such a foundational unit and like the biggest strength of France, knowing how to use Grenadiers is really important. And simply put, the Grenadier of the Guards need to be able to rely on their efficiency and the fact that it is very hard to deal so much damage if you keep it range. The Grenadiers should not be getting in the face of enemies. They should be dancing at that two tile range where they're able to often deal heavy amounts of damage to the enemy, but yet the enemy is not able to retaliate in a significant enough a way that they're, that they're going to completely annihilate the Grenadiers. This is an important aspect, and it is where France kind of gets that thing of playing a more defensive end, but you still absolutely need to be proactive with France. You can't sit back and rely on just like corner camping with France in order to win. Especially if you're do going up against someone like, say, Prussia, who, if you give them the chance, their Krupp artillery is going to absolutely destroy you. So it's important to make sure that you're, you, that you're being proactive and contesting areas on the map that are important. If you can get the Grenadier of the Guards on a like important hill, they will absolutely destroy the enemy with no remorse. However... With all that said, it's, a, it's important to keep in mind that it is okay to lose the Grenadier of the Guards. You can't, like, you're not going to be able to always keep them alive, and you shouldn't compromise your entire position or army trying to save them. There are times that a Grenadier of the Guards is going to get pinned or shot up real bad, and there's nothing you can do to save it. The only thing you should try to do is make it so that if a Grenadier dies, then you have gotten value out of it. They've maybe, you know, killed one or two units, and they've essentially taken down as much of the enemy's force as they, they cost. So they killed 255 points worth of enemy, roughly. Like, let's say they managed to kill two Prussian line infantry and then got killed by a Krupp artillery. That's fine, because it means that they've pretty much traded up a little bit in money. Two Prussian line infantry are uh, about 320 in points, so they've made about 60 points of a profit, or they have an advantage of you being 60 points ahead of the enemy. The enemy is going to be real desperate to kill your Grenadiers because everybody understands how important the Grenadiers are. So it's important to make note of that and make sure that 
when you use your grenadiers, you can potentially bait enemies into bad situations if they think they might have a chance to get your grenadiers. And this comes down to mind games and all that, but regardless, just understanding that grenadiers are important, but you should not, like, kill your entire army trying to save them. Keep them alive and keep them very safe, but understand that, like, at some point, like, all that matters is winning, and you shouldn't give up if you lose them. Just make sure they're getting that value, uh, you know, they get value before they go. And with that said, we are at the end of this guide. If you Again, if you enjoyed the content, make sure to like and subscribe, as I plan on doing a guide based on every single nation in the game in the coming future. Uh, but also, let me know down in the comments below, which faction would you like me to see, would you like to see a guide on next? Uh, you know, is there one you want, you're struggling with, or you're just interested to see how it's built? Uh, you know, maybe I will end up doing that as the next one. But otherwise, uh, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a good day.